Have you ever done any free labor before? I, an internship? Internships are so fucked up. I think it's messed up. Did I ever do a free? I don't think I ever did. I did for the International Emmy Awards. Joe, you were like booking it to New York City to do that. But I, I was, I'll never losing, forget. I was draining money every day of my life. I thought that was the coolest thing that you did. It was cool. I felt like that was like my moment with fame. You were listening to French films. That was the easiest thing in the entire world. That entire job was me going into an office yep. where they had a Nespresso mm-hmm. and unlimited kind bars. That was my beginning of my relationship to like my first eating disorder I think okay do you ever have a cubicle I never had a cubicle but I will say when I was at the New York Stock Exchange <laughs> on my free internship um I was in basically what it was a cubicle with about 10 um adult men hot yeah wait was anyone hot no I was there for a finance internship and I was getting the pizzas yeah that's what free labor means yeah imagine me at jobs where we had to wear suits I would love it I know I'm wearing a juicy tank top Abercrombie jeans and Ugg boots right now and I'm wearing my my shirt is actually couldn't be lower (laughs) and my pants fully unzippered stomach out feeling a little bulgy i could really Really use a wish wish right now now. that song changed my life Haley williams in general like i do remember one time i was mad at you and we were in like ninth grade i think we had bbm what was my status like yours was probably like you know like hanging out and i i think a lot of my anger with you at that point was Mm -hmm. like i was just feeling left out and it was because i went to a different school so i would just be like going home to no friends and like you had friends were you actually upset that I didn't go to St. Anthony's because we took the test together. Was it like was in ups- our mind that we were going to St. Anthony's together? That was together? definitely, yes. But I yeah. don't think I was upset that you weren't. Okay. In retrospect, maybe I really was. Because like that definitely fucked me over in the sense of like having friends. But I was like weirdly optimistic going into yeah. high school. Like I had no anxiety around making friends. Mm-hmm. I just thought it was going to happen really easily. And then, like, when it didn't, I, like, was like, okay. Like, I didn't really care. You took that video on your first day of freshman year, right? It's time to give you guys a recap of my first day. Because it was, it was interesting. Cannot wait to read all my books in English. That video? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, young Tony Soprano. Oh, I'm happy that you were optimistic about your I was optimistic, experience. yeah. I think that I'm weirdly extremely pessimistic about normal things. Yep major life changes i'm always like it's gonna work out a good children that was really good hey you guys and welcome back to good children the podcast where me and andrew reflect on the shared nostalgia of growing up in the late 2000s early 2010s and all of the laughter trauma and trends that that entails speaking of trends joe <laughs> Can we please? There's going to be a lot of in these episodes going it's forward. It's the new thing, unfortunately. It's the for new us. thing for our listeners. We can't stop doing it. It's kind of like. But speaking of trends, can we talk about that tank top? Listen, uh, uh, I grew up aspiring to be like a juicy girl. You yeah. know, like that was something that I really respected mm-hmm. in like a Paris Hilton. I have a complicated relationship with Paris Hilton. Okay, can we get into it? The Simple Life. A Simple Life with her and Nicole Richie. It's kind of us. Does it get any better than that? It's kind Wait, of it's us. kind of giving us. You're yeah. obviously Paris and I'm Nicole. Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, it right. makes a lot of sense. I just feel like I'm always taking the, the, the one that's like the Shrekier character versus the donkey. But that... Uh, yeah, I do think <laughs> that like at the end of the day, it's like you're giving main character and I'm giving like I'm side character, but like beloved, beloved. Yeah, yeah. you're kind of right. Yeah, that's always how it is. That's how kind of like Nicole was. We're Shrek and Donkey. We're SpongeBob and Patrick. We're SpongeBob and Patrick in a way that like people I don't think anyone can like really process. No, but I think I give the energy more of a Squidward. You know what I mean? You do give the energy of a Squidward. Absolutely. The only thing that you're missing there is playing the clarinet. But you and are I can okay, learn. So talk about your outfit. Please. Okay, this is a red so carpet. My top is juicy. The jeans are actually Abercrombie and Fitch. <gasps> I know. Abercrombie and bitch. My stomach is bulging over them. As it should. I'm not going to play Abercrombie on that. I bought these in 2020. Okay. And then I'm wearing, Mugs. obviously, my Uggs. Yeah. Having a size 13 Ugg is like... So what are we talking about today? Today we're talking about trends of the late 2000s. We're getting into, honestly, everything. We're talking about news. News. We're talking about... Media. Media. We're talking about boy bands, girl groups. Should we get right into flow? 
I do want to talk about flow. We have like every week we come on this podcast with a new <laughs> obsession that we would die for. Are there, does and it ever fizzle out? I, don't, I haven't listened to a Sabrina Carpenter song in three weeks. Oh my God, we talked about Sabrina Carpenter. You're right. Yeah, in a, in a crazy way. Are you yeah, kidding? I was like dancing to her music. I do love that album, but like I forgot. I'm going to put your shit in a cardboard box. Changing my number and I'm changing the locks. They're bringing back what feels like real girl group energy. Yeah. And I'm like really excited for it. It's giving Destiny's Child. It's giving it's TLC. Giving, it's giving. It's it heavily all. inspired. Oh, we'll very. Say that. But it's inspired in a way that like works. Honestly, like we've watched all of their videos. No, like last night you, I was in my room. I don't know why I was in my room. Were yeah. you, was I mad at you? That's what I'm saying. Were you mad at me? No, I think I was working. You were working. I was editing. Yeah, you were editing. Um, but I just like all I heard was Flo playing from the living room. And every time that you're editing, I'm kind of like Joe's mad. Joe's mad. Yeah, that's, do you really think that? Sometimes, yeah. What's going on with your shoulder? I'm just like touching it. Yeah, it was kind of like you're just like massaging your shoulder. Yeah, and I'm like self soothing in this moment. I'm wearing your skin tight tank top, and like, it looks so good. I'm just gonna like think about it the whole time, but like not in a way that's gonna ruin the episode. I mean, like you looked good before you even went to F45, but n- also now oh a week a- in, the yeah. way that I'm dropping F45 is kind of. You know what I mean? Oh my god! Yeah. Wait, holy shit! I feel like half of this episode isn't going to necessarily fall under the trend radar, but more yeah. in like the pop culture, like what was happening on in the world at that time. Yeah. And something, and this is sensitive, so I want to make sure people know that. Like okay. this is something that I feel like... Um, should I, I should be aware as well that it's going to be a sensitive topic. It's a sensitive subject and I don't want anyone to get offended. I don't want anyone to um, like okay. have uncomfortable feelings brought up. Okay. Balloon boy. Oh my god. Balloon boy. Balloon Falcon boy. Feeny. And you know me, I was I was sitting at home and I was saying, he's in that balloon. America was. Everyone believed that he was we in that were damn balloon. Balloon boy. Was the narrative that the father placed him in this balloon and the sent him off? The narrative was that Falcon snuck into the balloon prior to send off. The balloon went up and they said, where the hell is Falcon? And that little loser. Don't call him a little loser. That little man. That child. That child, someone say, was sitting in an attic? Yeah. So, yeah, they, like, found him, like, after the search. It was, again, like, it was, like, national news. It was being broadcast that Falcon was up in the air. Everyone's freaking out. I know that that my family is, like, glued to the TV like it's the OJ trial. Like, it's the Casey Anthony trial. Which I don't need to bring up. We but don't need to bring it up, some, but that was... We'll talk about it. Yeah, we can get into it. Um, for sure. I had strep throat the day of the Casey Anthony verdict, I as I always do. Were you going to miss... You were worried that you were going to miss the verdict? Don't worry. Don't worry. It was I was being at the doctor's office with my mother, and the news came in that the Casey Anthony verdict was coming in, and she actually said to the doctor, we have to leave. We sure. went home. Mom, is this post-nasal drip or strap? No, we went home, we watched Casey Anthony get found not guilty, and then we went back to the doctor's office. You're kidding me. It was that much of a priority in my household. I spent every night of my childhood watching Nancy Grace. I mean, Joe, that has to have a toll. That yeah. Ha- yeah. Uh, look I mean, at me. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You yeah. are a direct product of Nancy Grace. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Nancy Grace pipeline. The, the yeah. child watching Nancy Grace to gay podcaster in a juicy tank top <laughs> pipeline is loud and clear. Yep. Balloon boy. Balloon boy. So then they find Falcon. He's up in the attic. He, everyone's like, thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Some are disappointed. Yeah. Then he's being interviewed by the news. And someone says like, um... Falcon, like, whatever, like, what how do you, ha- what happened? Falcon looks up at his parents and says, you Stop. said we did it for the show. <gasps> yeah. Oh, okay. Prior okay. to this, the family was on wife swap. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And they were gunning for their own reality show. And they, honestly, they found honestly, an amazing genius. way to get there. If Falcon kept his mouth shut, yeah. they would be, they'd be gosselin. I mean, he, 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 had a, he had to be punished. After that one. Because yeah, you know what? Things if he, weird after. What what happened? After Balloon Boy, I believe they moved to like Southern Florida. That's a normal trajectory yeah. for sure. And then um, they became like Falcon and his brothers developed an alt-right rock band. Oh. Where there's two songs that I remember. I looked this up in like pre-COVID. Oh, you're a listener? You're streaming? Yeah. One was called Balloon Boy No Hoax. <laughs> Honestly. Which is interesting because prior, they admitted it was a hoax. Yeah. The family admitted it at some point. Then Falcon was like, Balloon Boy, no hoax. I was, I didn't know. 
then they also released this, I think, like, a really crazy song about, like, killing Hillary Clinton. Okay. All right. Were they trying to go for the Kardashians? They were trying to be the next Kardashians. The I really feel like Gosselin makes more sense for that family. You're right. Because You're at right. that point, Octomom, Kate Gosselin, Feenies. It made it would be, sense. It would be a TLC show. It 100%. Yeah. And I'm sure TLC, like, I'm sure the moment that that balloon went in the air, TLC was calling up. They were like, oh no my God. No matter what the show, outcome of this show. is, you're giving you a TV show. Yeah. Where's our TV <laughs> show? Imagine we were on TLC. No, I think that, I do think, like, it could be like a Honey Boo Boo. You, you know what I mean? You give me Alana. Yeah. And obviously, like, that's what I was watching every night. Yeah. And you were watching Nancy Drew. Nancy now, Grace. <laughs> no. <laughs> Yes, Nancy Grace. <laughs> now that you mentioned that, that rings a bell. Did you wish you were like a toddler in a tiara? I wish I was a toddler on a stage and being recognized for my talents. With like flippers? And... Yeah. When I saw those flippers, I was like, I need whitening strips. You were like, dad. <laughs> I was like, dad. <laughs> so the flippers are, <laughs> they're a little bit crazy, but they're going to make my teeth white. I do feel like it's crazy that you didn't perform in any way like that. No. Like, I just wanted to strut on the stage, and I wanted to be like, okay, now it's the talent portion, and I'm going to do a little song. I'm going to strut my stuff. I'm going to smize. I was watching Toddlers and Tiaras coupled with America's Next Top Model. Yeah. Does it make sense? And look at the pictures that we were looking at of you last night. I... Why it's a group of 11 boys in a, in a swimming pool. Everyone is smiling, and you are actually, like, voguing in the corner. And, like, even in, like, And also, you're chin deep. <laughs> yes. You're fully submerged, but you're like... Thank you, Tyra. Tyra did. I mean, she inflicted lifelong damage to so many models, but she did teach us how to smile. She didn't inflict lifelong damage to this model. Mm, you're experiencing lifelong damage as a result of that that's show. What's happening? Yeah, you're a direct byproduct. Oh the God. things Janice Dickinson said on that show, I saw a TikTok yesterday that was like genuinely... People, like, want to attack Tyra. Like, sure, Tyra was the face of that show. The shit Janice Dickinson said and Mm -mm. got away with, Mm -mm. I've never in my life. Mm -mm. Horrendous. And, like, who was she to even say that? The first supermodel? Yeah, she's kind of iconic. I mean, she is iconic. Yeah, give it to her, but that doesn't justify what she was saying. No, she was being, like, vile. Nasty. Vile. Like, horrendous. Yeah. A woman who... Change the course of history. A woman who said, your expectations of me will not control me. A woman who didn't take no for an answer. A woman who walked onto a stage and changed the world forever. Oh my god. A woman whose name is Susan Susan Boyle. Boyle. Yeah. Susan Boyle. Boyle. We all wanted to laugh. We all, she walked out, people were people laughing. were not expecting it. Simon Cowell was huffing, he was he puffing. He so Everyone hot. was like, oh, yeah, he's hot. But like, she walked out on stage and everyone wasn't even going to give her a chance. No, no one wanted to. And, and she, was she like, opened that mouth hmm. and she said, I, I dreamed a dream in time gone by. And, and the it, control, the power, the vibrato. The it was soul. The soul. The soul and the, the spirit emotion. of Susan Boyle entered my body and mm. it has never left. No. It was such a world shift for me. Yeah. I was like, oh, like. You literally said, happened. like, that's music you've never heard before. Yeah. Yeah. You've never heard someone sing like that because, again, the um, the raw emotion that was coming out of that woman's mouth. And she 20 didn't million even records. Win. 20 million records sold. 50K 20. for a verse. No album out. Mm-hmm. You know and she I started mean? as a joke. Yep. And now look at her. Now look at Susan. Susan Boyle. Incredible drag name, Susan Boyle. Susan Boyle, B-O-I-L. Oh, yeah. I know that every single gay man in the entire world believes they could win Drag Race. And yeah. I think that's honestly a really sweet thing about us like it's the one (laughs) thing about the gay community that i think is unifying and like maybe we should celebrate that more because it's like it's nice that we're all that delusional we all believe that we have charisma uniqueness nerve and talent talent. and i'm like yeah i could easily win drag race i can't do makeup i cannot dance i know how to sew cannot sew i honestly don't work well under pressure. No. There's nothing going All we can do is show up. We're just assuming that we would win by just showing, just showing up, up. And that is the problem in itself. I'm like, I would eat that stage up. I feel like you're not going to have a lot to say about this, but I have too much to say. Oh, jeez. And it's like toys and dolls. I wasn't playing with any dolls besides Barbie's dream house. You know what I mean? Toys missed me. Toys missed you 
They found me. Yeah. I was only playing with toys when I was at your house. Were we playing with toys together? Yeah, we absolutely were playing with toys together. What kind of toys? Littlest Pet Shops. We were playing together with Littlest Pet Shops? Yeah, for sure. No, that's something I did in the privacy of my own bedroom. No. No, they were in the playroom as well. I think that you felt comfortable enough to share your oh, toys with me. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah. The thing that changed my life was Bratz. Bratz For a platitude of reasons. One. Fashion. Fashion. Two. The boy brats were hot. Yeah. And you can't deny that. Those Their, their eyes were stunning. They're, they always had stunning eyes, sculpted faces. Yeah. And their hair was, I think, real hair, which I always appreciated mm-hmm. versus like a Ken sculpt moment. Yeah. Did it fuck you up? There was so much alarm and concern around those dolls fucking up girls, like little girls' relationships to their bodies, their yeah. self-image, how they're going to grow that up. Makes sense, yes. And... Those people were right because yeah, everyone is a brat stall now. Mm-hmm. Down to the fact that we have like brat stall challenges where the goal yeah. was to look like a brat stall. Like you're like beating your face to look like a brat stall. Absolutely. My peak body dysmorphia, face tune era. I was trying to look like a brat stall. Like I was looking like a brat's boy. I I will say too. Like I don't think that brats like were realistic in like what a person should look like no obviously just, obviously not. like your head the yeah. eyes the everything but, but i was like going i want to look like a brat a boy brat doll okay so i was like face tuning to the point of like i was like sculpted cheek bigger lips like raised eyebrows lighter eyes like flat imagery but i did love my brat ski lodge and it was the best christmas gift i ever got my parents my they didn't parents, spare like, a dime with toys they didn't spare a dime with toys and they like aided and abetted in the fact that i was gay you know yeah. like they were like yeah come on like i mean like you were getting brats my parents got me a brat ski lodge for christmas oh. and then i came out and my mom actually was like i just didn't expect this <laughs> <laughs> And you're like, mom, I literally got a brat I literally, ski I'm lodge. not joking. That is my. That was verbatim what I said back to her. You had a I was brat like, ski you lodge. Bought me you had a brat hundred webcams. Lodge. You had pet, littlest pet shops. You had a, You were doing Fergalicious. Like, that's yes. the thing. I was playing with like my sister's Barbies. Yeah. But that was probably about it. You were like getting a hand down And I had down two goodness. bunnies, Chloe and Lamar. Did you have warts? Oh my God. I had a wart at a really young age. I feel like it's... I was like, yeah. Okay. I do want to know where do warts come from? I don't want to find out. Okay. Secondly, I was about eight years old. Yeah, that makes sense. And I feel I like would, that's the age that you start getting warty. Yeah. I, like, would flex my wart. Ew, what? Mm-hmm. I mean, Joe, like, you know me and feet. Like, I would have this little... I had this wart between my big toe and my... I don't know what you call that. The second toe. <laughs> and it was so large, it looked like another toe. And then, like, when someone was mean to me, and I was like, suck my wart. You know what I mean? Suck my wart? Yeah, I was like, well, you can suck my wart. You know how people are like, you can suck on my toe? Was no one's ever saying that to you? Was that just me? I like, think you might have been saying that to me. Oh, my God. So, like, I was, like, deep-rooted in foot fetish from, like, yes, a young from day age. One, sure. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I was telling people to suck my wart. And it was a really uncomfortable pain. Yeah, no. Yeah. I had a huge, colossal wart. Strawberry-sized. Yeah. Yes. Um, but, you know, like, warts are like icebergs. They are. Because there's so much exists above the surface, but the real, the real, the real meat of the wart is below the surface. Yeah. I got my, I got my wart frozen off, thank God. See, I had mine lasered off. Okay, I went to this absolutely disgusting podiatrist in Islip, <gasps> Dr. Rest his soul. Rest. He easy. recently passed. Oh. He had the meanest, meanest front desk woman who was... I would say 200 years old. Like, she was so old and she was so mean and there was a no cell phone policy. In the podiatrist? Yes. Yeah. What was it, the Library of Congress? Yes, no, you had, to be, you had to be silent in the waiting room. You had to, you walk in and you had to be silent. No speaking. And what was her name? For some reason, I'm getting Barbara. Yeah, that makes sense. And I would go there. This was around the age that I was reading, like, Septimus Heap, Aragon. So, like, mm-hmm. I would sit in that waiting room for upwards of two hours no reading. phone, dead silent, reading books yes. with my mom. Then I would go into this room that they had a big, giant metal tub. And I would st- stick my feet in that tub. Okay. Oh my god, this is all coming back to me. I This is also this is around the crazy. age where I started getting like hair on my toes. <gasps> and I was like, can't have this. I'm just shaving it off. Chopped off, I would argue, like so many layers of skin. Oh. But I still have a scar on my big toe oh from where god. I just... And the guy was like, did someone step on you with a stiletto? This was not Dr. This was his, like, gay assistant. Yeah. Because um, everyone needs a gay assistant. Yes. That looks like feet. 
Yeah, um, yeah we, you, this we're is a dream job. job. <laughs> yeah. um, Soak it in the tub, go into Dr. G's room. The room was like larger than it should have been. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like you there was like, not a lot in the room. Yeah, and like you don't need that much room. No. And it was like a large room. Me and Patty, I'm still reading. The laser was like a series of unfortunate events vibes. Like it was a giant, huge machine. It was like NASA and oh. pointed at my little toe and my big, big wart. <gasps> To this day, I will never forget the feeling. And I actually, like, every time I think about it, I, like, tense up. Were you, like, were you drugged? My mom is psychotic and would never let me go under for anything because she thought I was going to die. So I had, I was, like, numbed. But I was, like, okay. I was aware. Like, my wisdom teeth, too, I was awake for that. A bucket of blood underneath my foot for the That's board. disgusting. A bucket. And it was filled with my blood. They zzz, laser off my wart. But then, because you can't let any wart left over, otherwise it will come back. They had to scoop. No. <laughs> like a watermelon scoop of wort. And the oh scoop were touching my bone. No. I'll never forget the feeling. My toe bone has been touched. And then it wasn't even over because then I had a gaping hole in my toe and I had to soak my toe every single night and put this shit on. And it was so painful. So painful. Oh my God. I did get out of gym. I got out of gym. Thank God. And it That's made it worth that it. Happened. It made it worth it for me. Oh my god. And when Those I got back from my toe back. surgery, my parents got me the snake webkins. I mean, I can't. I can't even keep up. I don't know what I was doing. I don't know what happened, but I took the snake webkins and shoved it in my mouth. Um <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> no. I threw up. Wait. <laughs> Joe. What happened? Why? I, think I was like I think I was trying to reenact like a scene from Harry Potter where like the snake slides down the woman's throat. And I like I was like probably I was probably on camera doing it. I'm sure I have a video of it. Do you have a really bad and, like, gag my, reflex? I have a horrible, as you know, I have a terrible gag yeah. reflex and the snake went in, everything came out. I feel Do really feel, I feel so light. I was just about to say it kind of looked like you transcended. Yeah, I feel like I just dove into some of genuinely some genuine trauma with the yeah. foot and I think that you're like, glowing. I feel I feel like I'm glowing. And you should appreciate your feet today and always. I know. I'm really thinking like those that feet was painful. You were always at the podiatrist for those flat oh, fucking God. feet. I recently got lasers on my eyes. You know that double holes. Yeah, I went to the I went to the eye doctor, and this is the thing. Did you if, drive home? Yes. <laughs> because this is how, this is how it worked. They brought me in. They lasered both of my eyes. It was the most uncomfortable pain. They got rid of the retinal holes. They put those drops in your eyes that really just, you know the one. They Dilation. dilated my eyes. Um, and then I did forget my sunglasses and I did have to drive home. Um, that does not sound legal. Or no, okay. and it probably wasn't. And I feel like you picked me up dinner. I did. I did. You, you were like, like, you're hungry. And I Kidoba. went. Yeah, I did get Kidoba and I, <laughs> I drove right over. I pushed through pain in a crazy way to a point where I, first of all, I did not want to play football. I didn't want to play football. But it was the first day of eighth grade football and we're doing line drills. Right. And we're doing backpedaling. Right. And they say, if you fall while you're doing backpedaling. What is a line drill? It's just like, you know, you're doing like the high knees and then you're doing the yeah. whatevers. Sure. I don't know, sports. Sure. They were like, if you do a backpedal, don't put your arm down. Don't put and your you arm put down. little arm down. I was doing backpedaling and obviously I fell and I put my little, little arm down. Everyone was laughing. Everyone was like, musky, you put your arm down. I feel like people were always laughing at your pain. Yeah. Like, always. I was part of it. Yeah, everyone was laughing at me, laughing, laughing, laughing. I broke my wrist. I broke my wrist. But I said, I'm not going to stop. I can't stop. Because these little losers were laughing. And I'm going to show them that I'm tough. I continue to do push-ups. No, like, you could have done such irreversible damage to your body in that moment. Oh, yeah. Because then I said to the doctor, I was like, you, I'm like, I'm so sorry, like, I have to go to the hospital. My dad picked me up, went to the hospital. They reset my arm. They reset my wrist. They said, this is going to be the most pain you've ever experienced. Was it? Yeah. We fly so high. We fly together. Fly together. Are there any trends that you regret partaking in? I'm sorry. Like, 
Uh, when you're you're touching your milkers, what were you saying? Is there a trend that you regret partaking in at any point? You were never really a trend follower. I wasn't a trend follower. I kind of like was always doing my own little thing. I mean, specifically with fashion, I was never really following a trend there. Um, Besides Vineyard Vines. Yeah, and, you, and I, guess, I actually did a deep dive. And you applied to be a Vineyard Vines whale rep. And I found the video on YouTube last night. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. I did apply to be the Vineyard Vines Bell rep. Hi, my name is Andrew Muscarella. I attend Loyola University, Maryland, and I'm in the class of 2018. My everyday should feel as good moment is when I'm hanging out with my friends. I am so annoying. I think that that's just- I know, I know like everybody says up. that they're annoying and is growing up and I, at least I can reflect on it now, but like, yeah. Me trying to apply to be the whale rep, I was like, I just want free Vineyard Vines, but then I was, ha I was at this crossroads because I got it. I got the whale rep position. It did go to my junk mail, okay. but I think that was a blessing in disguise because the internal dialogue I was having with myself was, do I want to be known as, as the, the whale, whale rep, rep, as the whale of Loyola? I just simply couldn't do it. You'll that... always be a whale rep to me. Okay. I talk about this all the time yeah. and like I'm beating the subject to death and I know it. But I just feel like as a society, we could really use a moment like this right now. And that moment is yeah. Ice That's Bucket really Challenge. What, what did you say? Fuck? What did you say? I literally said Ice Bucket Challenge. <laughs> <laughs> I was having the time of my life with the yeah. Ice Bucket Challenge. Did I help any victims of ALS? Unfortunately, I let the ball drop. Yeah. <laughs> but like, I will say, like, no. I did not live up to the potential of what the challenge was. And I no. fear nobody did. Yeah, I don't think anybody did, but like, it was a time for you to get creative. And I got creative. You were very, very creative. People I was were, in... again, the biggest flex was like, how big can my bucket be? I said, you're gonna pour this bucket on me and you're gonna then kick Push, me in the yes. pool. What? But that's also, this is why I brought it up because that's also how your whale rep video ends is you get kicked in the pool. I love to be kicked in the pool. That's like a thing you're into? Yeah, I mean like, is that not drama? It is drama. It's kind of like a, oh my god. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, I'm, I'm accidentally in the pool with my shirt on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of like, oh my god, I look so good. I kind of come swimming up and I'm like, what was the new challenge? Wasn't it like really scary? What? People were like dying. What are you talking about? I think I made that up. How are your pits doing right now? Yeah. I mean, again, this is becoming OnlyFans content. Um, my pits. Joe are actually so earlier up. today. I could not be colder. I'm literally mm -hmm. like, help me! I'm shivering. Joe, I look over. He's shirtless. There's beads of sweat dripping from his pits. I'm like, Joe, what the fuck? It's a disease. I mean, it basic, and you wear clinically, clinical strength deodorant. I don't understand why this is happening right now. I'm sorry. Like, I didn't this mean to This must drag. be, is this how Marilyn Monroe felt? Because yeah. I, do the, I do this to you every single week. Yeah, it I is. I get it. I kind of get it. Let's hear it. Let's hear it for the drag. Yeah. The I drag do it all. sweat profusely, but I do feel like in the same way that your prosciutto feet can be mm, made. Let's not get it twisted. Soprasada on my feet. Your soprasada feet. feet. And my sweaty pits could both be like repositioned as something that's hot. Yeah, I think it could be a candle. It's just like when the socks are dirty, do your laundry. It's like what I've uh, I mean, I can't talk about doing laundry. No. I, I want to talk about you doing laundry. No. I'm so sorry. It's just like I walk into the laundry room and like, listen, it's, it's no better on my side. But Joe, it's so bad. It's I just crazy. Have so many clothes. Yeah, you do. You need to stop. And my problem is like I'm just gonna take it all to like a laundry service because like I was I just need it done one time because it's like I need a factory reset. Joe's taking it to a laundry service when we have a washer dryer. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm actually like what? Okay. I just like don't want to like I want it to be folded for me. You know what I mean? If you paid me, I I will pay you fifty dollars. Is that not enough? No, that's perfect. Okay, I'll literally memo you right after this. I'm not kidding. I will actually put your clothes in the washing machine, dryer, and then fold them for 50 bucks. Okay. Will and that iron? goes for anybody. Will you iron? I'll iron. I mean... Just select pieces. Like, okay, just like five. I will say, like, it's going to be $3 an item. 
I'm paying you fifty dollars as a flat rate fee. Yeah, to put my clothes in the I'm washing machine. I'm literally folding your clothes, and I have carpal tunnel. In that fifty dollars, it includes seven press items. Anything over seven would then be an additional five dollars. And I'm willing to go five dollars now. Yes, because now I'm doing seven. That's included. Okay, it's time. It's time. We're going to get right back over to that couch and we're going to watch a few videos together. Wait, I'm nervous. I am indeed wearing the Forever 21 sleeveless sweatshirt. Oh my God. We're here. We're here. Guess what, nerd? You never knew this about me. I'm a killer. Oh, wait. Okay, so we're off to a dark start. <laughs> wait, that was... Why did I feel like I was going to say I'm gay? <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? If only. Imagine we watched one of these and we just come out and we just blocked it out. <laughs> the fact that you didn't know what you were saying... I could... I've been working on poem. No. Look like this. You always were working on poems. Blackness is around me. It's a sea of dark. Oh my god. Surrounds me. <laughs> no longer am I happy but toy. For now, I shall cut me. <gasps> um. uh, oh my god. This stopped being fun. <laughs> this, oh. this experience stopped being fun in that moment. <laughs> oh yeah, so Andrew, you believe have two components. I am speechless. Oh, hey guys. <laughs> Wait, you can't say it's very. Okay. So, anyway. This is exactly us now. We're just in here. We got a little hot chocolate. <laughs> marshmallows. Oh, well. We. I'm in disbelief that this is good children. This is actually what it is. We're having we're having the snack of the week, and I'm saying we, I'm speechless. And like, I hope you can see us on camera. Wait, oh. and we're having our snack of the week, and we're dressed. We're dressed to impress. I'm not sure who we're dressed to do. I think we're dressed as pilots. Okay, what well, we said about sending it in because we'll definitely put it on the show. Joe Hedges at offonline.net. J O E H E G Y E S at the two with the shift. Opt O B T online O N L I N E dot period net N E T. Anyway. The fact that like you spelled it out for the three year old. Let there. everyone know exactly how to spell optonline.net. Yeah. Who were we modeling that after? I actually have no idea. That's crazy. That's, That's what we do now. It is really insane to see like me sit there. I obviously at this point I think was deeply nervous. Yeah. Yeah, you can tell I'm like sick to my stomach. Yeah. I think the entire time I that's why I'm also so intrigued about why I did continue to hang out with you <laughs> because I do think that every time that you did turn the camera on, you I was sick. sick because you sick wanted to my it. Because you loved it. I did and like you were really pushing me, pushing me, pushing me. Yeah, I was like I'm like very comfortable in front of You're, the camera I'm realizing. Yeah, extremely. <laughs> like in a way that's almost sick. Yeah. I was more comfortable in front of the camera than yes. behind it. Yeah. Bit. And I always had in my mind, like, this is going somewhere. Here we are. Yeah, well. <laughs> it's really making me think about my astrology reading. Oh my God, what did it say? It was, I met the, those astrologers at my company holiday party. Mm -hmm. And they were, it was when I was a video editor. She was like, you're doing video, at, like, you're behind the camera. And I was like, yeah, it's like where I belong. And she was like, no, you don't. No. She was like, I'm looking at your chart and this is the chart of someone who is going to be, she said between now and 28, I was 24 then. She was like, you're going to be going on a journey to bringing yourself in front of the camera <gasps> because she was like, that is where you belong. Oh and at 28, God. the spotlight will shine on you during my Saturday return. Hi, I'm Joe Hedges and I'm supporting Marshmallows. And hi, I'm Andrew. I'm also supporting Marshmallows. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, one more time. <laughs> Hi, I'm Joe Hedges. I'm supporting marshmallows. Hi, I'm Andrew, and I'm supporting Jiffy Lube Tire Repair. <laughs> okay, now, tires or marshmallows? Where can you go without tires? How could you have hot chocolate with tires? Have you ever tried getting 
How can tire you? Tire into hot chocolates. How can you ever go to someone's house with tires? Without tires. Marshmallows, you can't you can't roll marshmallows <laughs> on your car. You can't <laughs> eat a tire. Well, you can't go anywhere if you don't have any tires. <laughs> you can't have any enjoyment with hot chocolate. But at least you can get your dear and Susie Q's on time. This is the most you ever spoken. <laughs> Although you're marshmallows really good seem Yeah, you're like keeping me in check. I'm like, fuck. I don't like, lol. He's being funny earlier than me. Like, well, let's see these calories, baby. Oh! 100 calories, and you're not bad for how much? Two thirds of a cup. That's <laughs> like, <laughs> that. This is exactly us now. <laughs> Servings per container about 10. Ooh! Not 10 marshmallows! There's 10 servings in the stupid container. Anyway, have you ever tried oh. having roasting a tire and you're free? The rate you're at which I'm eating them? Oh, yes, you are. You're supporting the Now! It's also so funny that you chose to represent Jiffy Lou <laughs> Tire Repair. We're having another debate. Hi, I'm Joe Hedges, and I support oh. snowmen. <laughs> Hi, and Andrew, and I support Santa's reindeer. <laughs> so, have you ever tried to build a reindeer? Well, have you ever? How would Santa get to you guys, your houses, without um reindeer? And Rudolph, the red-nosed reindeer. Rudolph, the red-nosed snowman. That's stupid. Well, maybe there wasn't supposed to be a Rudolph, the red-nosed snowman. Well, at least reindeer Sorry. are real. Huh? So are snowmen! Think so about enough. Frosty! Frosty came to life because... <laughs> still can't! Still can't! That was so crazy. We have a lot to unpack. I have this thing with K-pop. Oh my god. If you're listening to us, I feel like you're a BTS fan. Would I you think, say and if you're not, you just, should be. I, that's because what I'll I say. think we radiate BTS energy <laughs> in do. some way. In some way, it's BTS energy. Yeah. Is when you're saying smooth like butter. Yeah, it's interesting. I feel like we've like demanded more of boy bands now, which is nice. Like because like the Jonas Brothers never really did it for me. Hey guys, this is Joe Jonas, and you're watching Disney Channel. Guys, what's up? This is Nick Jonas, and stay tuned for this new music video, Year 2000. I did see them in concert what do you like mean? six times. What do you mean? Are you offended? No, I'm not necessarily offended, but I would like to talk about that further because I do kind of like the Jonas Brothers. I never did. And I think, I don't know. This goes back to like that conversation we had about like crushes and mm -hmm. if I actually didn't like them or if I just thought they were cute. So I hated them. Okay. Because that is the pendulum for me. I was more about like, I'm listening to your song and I can't believe how good it is. Yeah, I did love their music. Like it was just the music. Do you remember when Frozen Yogurt had its come up? Frozen yogurt? Frozen yogurt was the biggest thing in the entire <laughs> world. You couldn't, yeah. you couldn't go into a strip mall parking lot without having at least two frozen yogurt options. Yeah, like pink berry, red mango, 16 handles. Swirls and swirls. Swirls and twirls. Red mango was always a little sour. bit sour. It was haunted. It was haunted. It was a sour, sour yogurt. And not in a good way. No. It was like the pipes had not been cleaned and no one was worried about but it. What, what was what was in it? Because they always Green. had me coming back. I don't know. For me, I think like the thing about frozen yogurt is they were like selling me this fantasy that it was good for me. Yeah. It was like, it was like a kit sin. I was like, being in a red mango makes me skinny and rich. Yeah. I did keep going back. Yeah, because it was something about the pomegranate. That's why I chose my university and then they closed it when I got there. You chose your school because of, why have you been saying university lately? I've, this is new. Joe, you grew up on a fucking farm, okay? And I'm from London. I do think that there's like some animosity. And I think what is going to be solved by that is like us having our snack. I'm hungry. I'm really starving. And actually, the only thing that's in my mind post the snack is it's that we're Taco getting Taco Bell. Yeah, I can't stop thinking about it. I mean, did I just see you drink directly from. I had, I had it. I had it. Andrew, that's appalling. Oh my Wait, God. God. I don't know. There's like some people aren't eating cereal enough. No. Like what? What? It, it's like it's like a childhood thing. Today we're having peanut butter magic spoon. Oh my god! We need and, that protein right now. Yeah, we do need the protein. It's like it really is protein packed. But like honestly, I'm in it for the peanut butter. Yeah. Like I want peanut butter cereal. Uh -huh. Period. Yeah. Cereal for me is like the one of the best foods you could possibly eat. Cookie crisps. I love cookie. I crisps. I wasn't into a cookie crisp. A frosted mini wheat. 
we had completely different tastes. I like the cinnamon toast crunch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. I did think that the bunny, the Trix bunny, was gay. Trix bunny, he gives asexual to me. Yeah, you're right. He gives me asexual. Booberry, bisexual woman. It's toucan Sam, gay. Yeah, I mean, come on. Any toucan. Fuck Apple Jacks. Fuck Apple Jacks. Also, like, fuck milk. I like. <laughs> I like my dry cereal. I do. Okay, now it is time for the girls. Okay. Like you guys, I grew up a certified good child. I, I'm going to be honest. I'm not reading the message. I tried to memorize it. So it's not going to be whoever wrote this. You might notice discrepancies between what you wrote and what I'm saying, but it's the same thing. I always did everything my parents expected of me. And as an adult, I'm finding it hard to follow my dreams and do what I want. Any advice? I mean, yeah. Growing up as a good child, I think that what I've learned is that my parents wanted to know what I wanted um, and I never opened up to them in that sense because it's so easy to constantly do what your parents are expecting from you. But when you aren't giving any pushback, when you aren't saying what you want, how do they know who you are? Yeah. And now it's like, it's not too late to say what you want because they want to hear from you. A lot of the tension between what you want and what you're doing is that you're not saying that you want it. Yeah. It's so easy to allow yourself to do what is expected from you, like to just follow that normal trajectory. And like, I think that for me, if I was to follow what's expected for me, I would be like a lawyer. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or I would be in finance or yeah. whatever. And now I'm a fitness coach podcaster right. that like wants to continue to do comedy and act and do all of these creative things that I never let allowed myself to publicly do in front of my family. No one's going to go up to you and say, you should become, you should do this thing that you want to do. No. Because no one knows that you want to do it. No. And the moment they find out, people want to support you. My dad's always been begging me to sing. Yeah. Like ever since I sang, he was like begging me. Yeah. He was like, do it, do it, do it. So do like it. with you, like if your parents knew what you really wanted to do and you showed them that you're working at it, they're going to want to support you. Yeah. And if you are met with pushback, prove them wrong. Do yeah. it anyway and do it right. Because if you really want it, you'll do it. No matter what, the things that you really want to do in life, I firmly believe, even if you are pushing them down as far as possible, Mm -hmm. even if you have fully given up on them, they're going to come back. Yes. Like, those those things that you feel called toward don't disappear. Mm Mm-hmm. And it's, you're only putting distance between yourself and the thing that you want. And at some point, it's going to come to a head. Yep. I now remember that this person's 21. Oh, I was just about to say that. Because the thing is, it's not too late. It's You're so young. People don't figure out what they want for their entire lives. Yeah. If you know what you want, though, do it. Do it. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to another glorious episode of Good Children. Um, you know exactly where you can find us. On TikTok, at Good Children Pod. I'm on TikTok, at Be Quiet Joe. At Andrew underscore M-U-S-K-Y. On Instagram at Good Children Pod. I'm on Instagram at Joe Hedges, H E G Y E S. I'm on Instagram at Andrew Muscarella, M U S C A R E L L A. And don't forget to rate, don't forget to review, don't forget to send us those because we are really, we're, make, we're making progress we on are. the DMs we have. And again, it becomes a fully. It's becoming a theatrical experience. It is. I don't know if anyone was expecting. There are a lot more than I was expecting, There's which more. I'm so There's grateful more. for. We're really digging our way through them, guys. And it's like again, like we are, we're not rehearsing. We're giving you unfiltered performances, <laughs> and I think that they're like they're impressive. And sometimes in my satin Australian shorts. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, follow, share, download, save, anything else you could possibly spread do. the good word. Spread the good word. And we will see you next week for our sweet 16. Sweet 16. Baby, Baby, you light up my world like nobody else. The way that you flip your hair gets me overwhelmed. But when you smile at the ground, it ain't hard to tell. You don't know. Uh oh. You don't know you're beautiful. Uh oh. That's what makes you beautiful. I'm tired.